All right, Rudy. Come on. Come on. You're back. You're making videos. You think you're all cool, whatever. Can we just show us some old cards? Show us what you're buying. We know you get everything built up and backlogged. All right. Let's go over some cool things, everybody. Let's try to get some of these orders and different things going on. We even got a... We got some sealed product coming through the door, too, everybody. There you go, so you can see the name. All right, so we're going to take a couple of the collections that have been uh, swinging through here in the last couple of weeks. Now that I'm trying to get caught up, it's going to take me flipping forever to get caught up. Um, all right, let's start with this one on the left. We're going to just go start, I guess, left to right. Let's just go basic order here. So this is an interesting little one here. Pretty much a basic story. Rudy, I like this one. This guy attempted to do handcrafted cursive message. You know, I guess back in the day, that was like a special thing. had value to it. Anyways... Um, so here we go here, um, handwritten mess, sorry. I uh, just wanted you to know that I always look forward to your investment talks and buy. I appreciate it, man. I, I, if, if at least a couple people in the world can learn one thing, even on a video, just one thing that has value. All right, seeing you go bananas over a statistical anomaly in card pools always makes the day. In addition to the humor. Yeah, I know, it's always fun. You gotta enjoy everything, everybody. I tell you, if you're not having a good time, you don't have a passion for it, the money will never come. You'll never be successful. You can't build a business. You have to want it. You have to have the passion. Then the money will naturally come. Giggity. So she said. In close, you'll find a small collection of cards he had. I amassed over the last year. I decided that I could not invest in any enough position alpha beta for it to make sense for me. You know, that happens a lot. So I decided to use the money that I received for the go towards paying tuition for a computer science degree. See, that's probably a smart move. Magic's been good to me. And the friendships I have developed are some of the longest lasting in my life. I started playing Magic when Ice Age was released, and I would have been nine years old at the time. Since then, I've played and collected on and off. Playing Magic got me through the rough times in my life. The most significant memory I have was in 2000, wait, was the support of my friends at a local LGS when I lost my mother in 2005. Dude, that's, see, I, I hear stories like that all the time. And appreciate it, Max. Stories like that, people tell me all the time about they had a local community or a store, or a play group, or something that really helped over the years, especially in turbulent times. And like I've told everybody on this channel over the last couple of years, it's easy to talk and make money, this and that, in the stock market, houses, collectibles, your job, and raises, and income. Everything's great when things are booming, but when the ocean level drops, all the ships go down, true personalities, and you learn about how, what kind of people, people around the world, or people you're associated with really are. And that's when you can really see true colors. So, Max, I hope your computer science degree works out. Let's take a look at what this gentleman sold here today. We got a little alley from Cairo Action. Uh, I will go ahead and comment to everybody. We're going to start here. Uh, the Arabian Nights cards, I mean, I'm going to just be blunt. The Arabian Nights across the board still remain very weak. People just, I mean, the prices aren't dropping anymore. That's good. They're, it's definitely, we're trending sideways. I'm not seeing a lot of upticks, I'm not seeing downtick. We are just consolidating sideways, which is a good, healthy sign, but, you know, nowhere near the highs or anything like that. But, again, if you have the money and you enjoy the cards and you have a passion, long term, I still firmly, firmly believe in that. Next, we have a couple of alpha. We're going to head over to the old alpha category here. We got some alpha wild growths here. You know, nothing super minty and gradable or anything like that, but still very clean, very nice, light play near mint cards. Very cool looking. Um, and, and I still firmly believe the Alpha Beta, especially Alpha with these infamous corners, make sure you don't get clipped or rebacked or stupid this and that. These things long term will retain value. They will continue to drift upwards. Uh, we got ourselves a humility. Uh, I left this one in here to definitely talk about with you guys because this is, this is an infamous Tempest card. And many there are many investors and speculators out there that really to this day still feel this card is very significantly undervalued and underappreciated because there's not really a lot of comparables to a unique card with mechanics like this i mean a firm enchantment that's not you know a spell for one turn that actually you know has the ability to kind of make everything basic one one creatures that's a very interesting concept that could be a lot of interesting archetypes to be built around that uh we got another rudy the rat over here oh wait we have this from the video in the past Remember over here, Magic the Gathering, people cheat like flippity floppity rats. So we got a Rudy the Rat again over here. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting a bunch of rats. I feel like it's going to be like a new Rudy meme at this point. Hashtag Rudy the Rat. And um, <clears throat> obviously not gradable or fancy mint. But just, you know, again, I think long-term alpha cards are going to continue to maintain a certain minimum level. And I think there will be a point where like in the future, like even an alpha common will be like 50 bucks or something silly. You know, nowhere near today, but... 
Um, fear, same thing. I think it will trend to that direction. Now, let's get to this one here. We got a playset of the Desert Nomads. It's interesting, you can see the top one here with a little bit of a more brighter red variant versus the normal three back here. Um, not really... Well, let me give everybody some basic information on this particular card. So, there are collectors out there that really like this card. There's a couple investors and people around the world that just hoard this particular card. They have a sentimental thing. There's some Star Wars fans out there that really love this type of card. Reminds them of kind of a crossover. There's people that just love the artwork and the style. Some people in the military, some people in other hobbies with crossovers. There, there's this card is very, and again, it's not like a super powerful, you know, U2 rare in the Arabian Nights or a rare mythic for those of you who are just used to newer cards. It's, you know, but it's still, a, it's an interesting card. It's Arabian Nights. And in this environment, same thing. You know, long term, a lot of these unique cards and things are going to continue to maintain value and probably drift upwards. Now, I don't know if I can really say cards like Desert Nomad or, you know, Raise Dead here. Are they really investable? I don't, I'm very hesitant to use that term. It's just a very unique collectible that you really can't predict the value of bizarre things like this. These aren't really specific sought after cards. So next, we got a little handful here. We got a nice little play set. Not, I'm sorry, not play set. We got a nice little basic land set here. Uh, one of each. All five are alpha here. Um, nothing really particular to say. I know there's a couple. I know a handful specifically. Probably between five or six people. I know specifically that are obsessed with alpha basic land. I know one person. I swear the man has like 4,000 alpha basic lands. It's unbelievable. And, you know, I do believe that Alpha Basic Lands will continue to be that thing. Like, just kind of that bragging rights, build a deck, and you're using Alpha Basic Lands. It's very symbolic, and I think the Alpha Basics will continue to be, you know, scooped up. And I think Alpha Basics still under... You know, there was a th I remember a while back in GP Vegas 2018, when I was talking to all the different uh, the people there, a lot of people were talking about, you know, Alpha Basics could easily be $50 to $100 a piece one day. And a lot of people felt $100 a piece was going to be the benchmark for an Alpha Basic land. Uh, Phantasmal Terrain, nothing to say there. Just another kind of random Alpha Common range. Hill Giant, another symbolic Alpha Common. Uh, over here, we got a few other little miscellaneous weird things. We got a little Legend Gold guy here. Ragnar! Um, again, that goes in the weird Alpha category of a lot of bizarre cards from the Alpha... Or not Alpha. The Legends era that just... A lot of them aren't worth a bunch, but they're unique. Uh, Coral Helm. Kind of a weird little antiquities card, not really very sought after, not really much value to it. Um, but, you know, it is old school antiquities, probably more, mostly uh, interested in probably set collectors. Besides that, it's not going to have a lot of really people going after it. Uh, over here, we got ourselves a Cursed Rack action, um, you know, reprinted. You got 4th edition white border reprints. Um, iconic card, you know, the Cursed cursed Rack, the Rack, the Black Vices, all those particular type of hand Damage manipulation based on quantity of cards, blah blah blah, has always been a thing. So, lastly, down here, you just got some commons. Marble Priest, never gonna be worth anything. And we got Metamorphosis, uh, Arabian Nights card. The only reason it has any value above, you know, a penny is pretty much Arabian Nights on that particular card. Uh, nice little collection there. Very cool stuff to see those old school cards. Appreciate it, Max. Hopefully, that helps you with uh, the schooling in the future here. So, now this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's talk about this little collection that came in here. Um, and again, I apologize for the delay. Some of these collections were a week ago, some were three weeks ago, some were probably a month ago by the time you guys see this video. You know, I'm just, you're going to have, so bear with me when you see prices and dates and things on some of this stuff because, you know, my, my channel and the videos because the Aquaria thing is going to be a disaster and it's gonna, the, the timing is going to be really funky. So keep that in mind for a while, everybody. Uh, we got a little one here. Rudy played Magic in the early 90s, gravitated towards the white life decks. Yeah, I remember that, white weenies and gain life stuff. And of course, sold and traded colors that were better for white. After a few years, I stopped playing and gave all my cards to my 13-year-old brother. Fast forward 23 years, I was wanting a new game to play with the kids. I remembered Magic and started looking into it again. To my surprise, and I hear this all the time, everybody. To my surprise, it was bigger. It was, I'm sorry. It was as big or bigger than before. Yeah, that's true. We started playing and having fun and started inviting other family members to join us. My brother was overjoyed because he missed playing the game. And the first night he came over... Handing back all my old cards from 23 years ago. We continued to play the last few years, but those valuable old cards were locked away in my safe at home, basically forgotten. With the shutdown, my jewelry store had to close for a month. Every little bit of cash helps. My stepdaughter, Jada, beautiful name, mentioned that she felt 
You were trustworthy. Um, <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate Jade is a beautiful name, and I appreciate that. Uh, she felt you were trustworthy to deal with the cards, and of course, uh, like I said, I don't pay the, the highest price, especially in this environment. Um, but, well, I mean, the prices have come down, and now they're kind of flat. But overall, yeah, there's you don't really have a lot of risk of theft or fraud or anything when you deal with a lot of the bigger guys like me. By the time you get this, my store will be reopened, and I hope it's on its way back to levels before the shutdown. Um, again, I appreciate that, Dave, and of course, your uh, your daughter, wish you both the best. And yeah, I know, with this 2020 crazy economy, I have no idea how things are really going to stabilize and you know, move forward, everybody, but it's, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. So let's see, we got another small batch of cards here, not tens of thousands or anything, but obviously the most valuable card in the batch here is we have ourselves, uh, you know, definitely a very, uh, a lot of, looks, looks like a lot of sliding on tables. Uh, we have a lot of weird edgeware there. Um, we got ourselves a very nice played tabernacle of the old Pendril Veil. You know, obviously iconic, most expensive Legends card in 2020. Obviously, back in the day, it was not the most expensive card. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about the Tabernacle, so I guess I can take a moment and talk about that particular card for a minute. And uh, people have been saying, Rudy, do you think this card's going to get back to that $2,500 near mint to mint high price from 2018? Where, and then, of course, the Italian version back to like $1,500, $1,800 high. You know, I do firmly believe it will. But I firmly believe everybody is miscalculating how long this is going to take. And I know everybody's saying, no, 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 everything's going back, it's quick. And, you know, I think we may be having a little, you know, what they call the dead cat bounce in, in Wall Street. You know, or, or bear market rally, whatever stupid, you know, term you want to use. But overall, I, I just genuinely think this stuff takes time. The markets need to consolidate, find their way naturally, and it takes time. In my opinion, it will hit the highs and probably eventually go higher. But I firmly believe it's going to be three, five, eight years. It's going to be, you know, the time involved is going to be in the years, not the weeks or the months, everybody. But it will get there if you have the patience and you want to collect and hold on to this stuff. All right, let's go over here to Shahrazad. Shahrazad. Uh, obviously, very iconic, very infamous piece of legend or legends. Arabian Nights history, one of Rudy's favorite cards of all time. And, you know, not much to say about it. People love to hate the card. That's the best way to say it. Obviously, nowhere near the all-time high of almost $400 a card. Nowhere near that price nowadays. I mean, the buy list tanked to like 100 bucks. I think it's re rebounded a little bit to maybe 120 130 Maybe they're selling back up to maybe maybe 200s. It's just I know it's come down a lot. Um, again, mostly sought after for set collectors. Some people have tried to brew and do weird things and drive people crazy with sub-game within a sub-game and all that craziness, but... You know, it's just a very ironic piece of, of Magic's history, especially considering Richard Garfield himself says that it's by far his favorite card. All right, so next we're going to go over here. We've got a, pretty much the dual lands. I want to talk about fetch lands and then this sealed product real quick that I've been buying. Um, we got some revised duels here. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't really have much to say on revised duels today. Uh, these are all just played ones, nothing super minty or anything like that. But we got some nice played revised duels you know, the prices are nowhere near the high. Everybody keeps saying, Rudy, when are the, when are the duels going to go back up? That's like the indicator for vintage and the health of the vintage market. The revised duels are the cornerstone, the benchmark. Well, that is true. Um, they, that kind of does represent a good sign of the overall health of it because there's, there's the most amount of these in existence out of any Arabian Nights, Legends, Antiquities, ABU cards. The revised duels are like that, that cornerstone that people monitor. Um, I have noticed a few small upticks in buy list prices. You know, I've seen some of the channel snowballs and kingdoms actually, you know, they're actually upticked, you know, 5, 10%. Some of them are 15%. They've upticked on specific dual lands. So there is a little bit of a bid happening. The market is showing, again, signs of stabilizing a lot quicker than I expected, which is good. That's good for everybody involved. It makes people feel more calm, makes the market have a little bit more confidence for all the consumers, collectors, and evil investors, and beautiful 3% young ladies. So that's a, that's a good thing. So now when we get over here to the, uh, the fetch lands here... This is something I've been getting so many questions about. Rudy with the Secret Lair Ultimate Edition fetch lands. Whoa! You know, Rudy fetch lands. What's the deal? What do we do about these fetch lands? Do we buy more? Do we wait for a reprint? Um, I'll be honest with everybody. I would not be buying into fetch lands at today's higher price. I'm sorry. I just, I can't get behind it. This overpriced Secret Lair fetch land thing is the biggest slap in the taco I've ever seen. It's absolutely disrespectful and distasteful to the 20 
25, I mean, how many years now? Got 25, 27 years of magic. 20, is it really 27 years now? Jeez. You know, I mean, 93, 2020? Really? Yeah, it is. Holy crap. You know, it's just, it's just not right. I can't get behind it. And I'm sorry, but there's going to be a day where Wizards does some sort of box reprint. It's not going to be called Master since that's retired or whatever you want to call it. There's going to be a day when some sort of reprint, in a Pioneer reprint set. We're unbanning the Fetchlands in Pioneer. A new Masters Modern, a new Commander. Ooh, a Commander Masters. Huh? I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. An EGH special Elder Dragon Highlander. Man, you know, There's going to be something, and I assure you, they're going to be in it. And by the way, friendly reminder, for those of you sticking around this video so far, there's a new Zendikar set coming at the end of the year. Word in the street is, and the rumors, and again, I'm going to use this very loosey-goosey, rumors is that uh, these enemy fetches are going to be available within that area. And when I say within that area, I don't mean the regular standard box, but some sort of lottery, promo, insert, this and that. There's going to be some form of insert in it. That's the word on the street. Can't confirm anything. Just going to leave that be. So again, if you're paying $100 for a Misty or $90 for a Scalding or anywhere within that range, I can't get behind it. I'm sorry. Why on earth? I, I just can't get behind paying $100 for a Misty when I can buy a Shaha Razad for $200. Or I can buy 1994 Revised Duels in the same price ranges. You know, these are under $100. Bucks. You know what? A Bio is what? $100 and change? You know what? What's Tundras and Underground Seas? Two, three hundreds now? Why? I, I just can't get behind it. So by the time you watch this video, these are going to be sold anyways. But obviously, we're from friendly reminder, everything else in the video, you know, I do not sell old cards. Nothing's changed. Just be aware. But yeah, these will be sold. Um, last but not least, I want to comment before we end today's video. Uh, Eternal Masters. Um, all right. I'm going to just take a second here. Eternal Masters is a really weird product. And it's continuing to age very strange. Uh, I had dropped a lot back down to 300. Now it's gone back up to the 400s, and the supply is just getting diminished to unbelievable, diminishly reduced. And I really want to lay that out there that I firmly believe Eternal Masters could end up being better in the king of the Master series. And I know that's silly sounding, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's the only set that has the Eternal staples compared to the modern cards. And the fact that we're not getting any other products that are reprinting these type of cards, I, I just, you know, just go online, look at the prices, look at the cards in the set, and I don't know how it's going to age, but I'm telling you all right now, the history of this product is unlike any other Master set, unlike anything, maybe besides Iconic Masters with the Infamy. But Eternal Masters is one of the most infamous modern era magic products ever. And the boom and bust history and how it flushed things out and what happened, I'm telling you all right now. And again, full disclosure, I did still, and I do still, keep a large position in Eternal Masters between one and 300 boxes at all time. So I'll be very blunt, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So I firmly believe in it, and I'm telling you why I believe that to be the case. And of course, if I'm wrong, I'll make a video and tell everybody, hey, remember those couple hundred boxes I kept? Now, guess what? Timmy Empire version 2.0? I was wrong. But in the meantime... I still firmly believe, I, I guess, I guess you know, at this point, I'm just surprised it's not $500 plus. If original Modern Masters is, you know, that is $500 plus on average, most local stores sell them for $600. Eternal Masters, based on the environment, to me, is just, it is the Master set that's not appreciated. And I think it's mostly because, you know, people were hosed in the past, and it created a bitter, you know, negative price memory, and just a bad memory for a lot of players and collectors and store owners out there. Even distributors, it just created a bad memory. So that's all I have today. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the first Rudy purchasing video back in a while here. As always, be safe. Make sure you're enjoying your life with your friends, family, loved ones. And again, if you're not, always dig a hole in your front yard. Jump in, count to a thousand, pretend you're a carrot. And sometimes you just need to go and stare at the sky and realize how, how amazing life is. And if you don't, you need to take a moment and appreciate it. You're not looking in the right direction, everybody. Make sure you're having a passion for something. These, these cardboard with ink and chemicals, this is my life. Take care, everybody.